STV, votre télé. One p.m. on STV TV viewers. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us on this edition of the English newscast on STV. Coming up in this newscast, the Normalization Committee of the Cameroon Football Federation won the indomitable Lions uh, head coach of Cameroon, Hugo Boss, sack for failing to meet up uh, his responsibilities. Uh, final and official statement is awaited from the Ministry of Sports and Physical Education. Good afternoon once more and thanks for joining us on this newscast. That was the lone headline of this edition. And we can start this, news for, uh, this newscast in sport where Hugo Bosa, uh, the head coach of the national football team, though that is the Indomitable Lions of Cameroon, uh, has uh, been sacked. That is technically by the FECA Food Normalization Committee. Going by document unanimously signed by the FIT members of the Normalization Committee at the end of their meeting uh, Monday. December 4, 2017, Hugo Boss' mandate ends after a 30 days temporary role. The head of the Indomitable Lions, according to Article 9 of the 2016 contract, will be indemnified. The Normalization Committee of the Cameroon Football Federation put forth Cameroon's inability to qualify for the 2018 World Cup in Russia. Coach Hugo Boss' rejection of key players in various competitions and the bolsters scandal and much more. We shall be having the analysis of sports or football experts in our subsequent editions of the news at 7 p.m. and 8 p.m. respectively. Still in sport, following a crisis meeting over the weekend, Northwest clubs uh, involved in the National Football uh, Championship uh, have threatened to boycott uh, the next football season. Their reasons in the following report presented to us by Philemon Balin. Club administrators of all Northwest teams taking part in the National Age 1 and 2 Championships in Cameroon have vowed to boycott next season's football competition faced with what they consider glaring injustice meted on PWD of Bamenda. In a dramatic turnaround of events in a game with Fovu and Botafogo, the Conciliation Chamber of the National Olympic and Sports Committee rules in favor of Botafogo, giving the team two points. This on the classification table will simply imply that PWD of Bamenda on 36 points will replace Botafogo on 36 points, but with a better advantage. Hence, PWD will have to descend to replace Botafogo FC in the regional championship. We spoke on phone with the president of Young Sports Academy of Bamenda, who confirmed to us that he is part of the signatories. The document signed by Young Sports Academy of Bamenda, Tang Bullet, National Polytechnic, and PWD of Bamenda, all of the Northwest region, was copied to the Prime Minister and Head of Government, the Minister of Sports and Physical Education, as well as the President of the Normalization Committee of Fika Food. We stay in sport, but this time we talk handball, where the indomitable lionesses of handball are looking forward to getting a victory in the next game against Netherlands this Thursday at the Women's World Handball Championship in, in Germany. They have lost their last two opening games and are second to the bottom in their group. John Paul Sama tells us more. The indomitable lionesses of handball have lost their two opening games at the 2017 World Championships currently taking place in Leipzig, Germany. The girls of coach Jean-Marie Zambo went into their first game on Friday against the host Germany and lost by 15 to 28. The lionesses lost the first half of the game by 7 to 12 and the second was not better as they succumbed to a 16 to 8 loss condemning them to their first defeat. We can't play against Germany, so we, are, we, used to, we used to see them on TV. So today we were able to, to meet them face to face and play against them. It's a really good experience. It was not easy, but we did our best. Our best point, I think, was our defense. Our defense wasn't bad at all. Our difficulty was at the level of putting the ball into the goals. So we had a lot of, we had a, a lot of opportunity of scoring goals and we missed them. Our next objective is to take to win two or three matches. 
It was sensational. It was a really good match for us uh, to come into the tournament. And um, yeah, it was really special because all the families and friends are here and uh, a lot of uh, people, you know. And um, so it's, it's, um, yeah, it's a good feeling for us to play here in Leipzig and in Germany. Well, I think in this moment we did not score. We had a lot of free shots, but we did not score. And uh, the coach take the time out and say, hey, come on, go to the goal um, further. And uh, yeah, we, but we have to throw the balls in the goal. And so, uh, yeah, we take the better concentration and then it would be better. On Sunday, against the Serbians, the Lionesses could do no better than bow to a 34-21 to beating from their opponent. The girls put up a less convincing first half performance, but they can take much delight from their second half performance, losing by just two points. But the damage had been done in the first half. They will now look up to their next game against the Netherlands to try and salvage some much needed points from their second ever participation at this stage of the competition. Serbia tops Pool D with four points, followed by Germany with the same four points. Netherlands are third with two points, as well as South Korea on the fourth spot. Cameroon, after their two games lost, sit fifth with zero points and a better goal difference than China, who are last in the group. Away from sport, we take you to the National Assembly where Andrei Mamafuda, Minister of Public Health, is right now before the Finance Commission of the National Assembly. Yesterday, Monday, Minister Issa Chiruma Bakawi, Minister of Communication, presented his roadmap made of two points, one of which ameliorating offers and access to information. The communication boss has proposed a budget of over 4 billion CV funds for. 2018, Minister Laurence Etunzungwa, Minister of Small and Medium Sized Enterprises, was equally before the Finance Commission of the National Assembly Monday to present his 2018 projects relating to the promotion of his activities. Let's get details from the Minister in the following extract. It is just the consolidation of what we initiated years ago and uh, the honorable members of parliament ask us to continue and to reinforce the capacity for actors so that they become many and many to to be taken care of uh, we think that uh, they, they, they feel you are in a good ship and you have to continue the assessment and uh, i think that we will go beyond all the problems to consolidate what we have resumed years ago Postal network of African countries pertaining to the Universal Project will soon go completely operational, that is digital. The workshop is ongoing in Yaoundé to devise ways of interconnecting different postal systems. It will facilitate exchange details with the SG of the Union. So it facilitates us. When we, go to, we went to the Congress, we identified this is the area we need to focus on to grow our business and uh, in that plan we, ha we have identified one project called operational readiness for e-commerce and the e-commerce if you want to know the link with post i just want to remind you that post has always been considered as a trade facilitator infrastructure even before the e common board we have been using I, uh, ICT information and communication technology from the telegraph Morse technology the telegraph with telescriptors when the, this uh, uh, photo, telecopies came so every time when there is a new technology the postal used to appropriate it and then to deliver better because we consider technology as a tool it is not at end at, uh, at all, at its uh, own, because in a tool, we are those who use to use it in the benefit of the community. We bring the national expert with international experts consultant, which have to discuss with them on the way, procedure, what to do, when to do it, how to do it, then to make them be ready. While other activities will be conducted, in the, they should be ready when they go back home they will be ready to deliver this e-commerce. 
initially scheduled for the first of this month, the Economic, Industrial and Commercial Days, JCAG, have been pushed forth to April next year. It is said that out of the 1,000 economic operators expected in Cameroon, in China, Cameroon has gathered less than 250 persons, according to the organizers. It is as a result of fear from Cameroonian business operators. More in the following extract of one of the organizers. It was postponed for a couple of reasons, amongst which the first was um, based on the request that the, our Chinese counterparts had. We didn't have enough companies to, for the event in December, so rather than going with a few, it was decided that we should push it for a few months. The second reason was uh, the high implication of the government in the project, based that some of the ministries were not ready with their projects and asked for enough time for them to be prepared and also at the level of the prime ministry to be able to coordinate all the ministries to participate. The third reason was um, based on the weather, the fact that December was very cold and just after the, um, the event with the Communist Party which was a bit a closed door affair in China. So all of these reasons caused us to say why not push it ahead so that we have a better organization you know, of the event. Pushing it ahead, I think that the organization has not changed per se. It's still the same organization. The form hasn't changed. The um, amount of participation hasn't changed. Rather, we have uh, China is a very big market and it has a lot of needs. Rather than going with a few companies, if we have more companies from other countries, it's a plus. But it doesn't change anything in terms of our local organization in Cameroon. In the economic capital Douala, the Douala One Council continues its weekly activity to stop urban disorder in the city. The task force met at Valle de la Bessenge with the population in an effort to impound a car. Philemon Ballet completes that story. A weekly muscular operation against urban disorder in the Douala One municipality sparks tension at Valle Bessenge neighborhood Sunday. Focus, as usual, was on makeshift garages and poorly stationed vehicles in the neighborhood. The tax force successfully impounded two vehicles parked behind a popular hotel in the area. But the leader of the operation explains that they were rudely interrupted by the supposed owners who questioned why they had to work on Sundays. Gendarmes called into court attention soon discovered the vehicle was stolen. Their intervention enabled the communal tax force against urban disorder to finally impound the vehicle. Council authorities have made a fervent appeal for the population to collaborate in order to curb urban disorder in the municipality. We remain in the economic capital Douala where traders in cooking oil at the Marché Central year see prices of vegetable oil and palm oil my weakness and increase this festive period. Though it is a tradition each year, these vendors attribute the possible hike to the scarcity observed this period. John Paul Sama went visiting and came back with the following. It is approaching that time of the year when households are getting set to celebrate the end of year festivities and cooking oil is part of that preparation. The market is flooded with vegetable oil whose prices ranges from 300 francs CFA to 1,500 francs CFA for the unrefined types while the refined and sealed one liter of vegetable oil costs 1,150 francs CFA. The difference between these two is the price and the quality. Dealers in this sector predict an increase in the prices of groundnut oil as the festive period approaches. The price has increased because we usually sell them at 1,200 francs CFA. But during this period, the prices have increased and might go up to 1,600 francs CFA in the days ahead. On the other hand, vendors of palm oil also predict an increase in its prices. The price always witnesses a rise in December 
because of shortage during Christmas and New Year. However, this commodity looks readily available in the market for now. Still in Douala, job seekers and managers of companies have exchanged ideas on career mobility and entrepreneurial orientation. This was in a two-day recruitment forum that ended in Douala yesterday Monday. Peter Soussi. The lack of motivation at work and the desire for a new start in a career often push workers to want to leave their companies for a new adventure. But not having a clear idea of what to do next remains a tough obstacle for them. This was the main idea around the recruitment forum that has ended in Douala. Ça a ramassé euh, en termes d'outils. Déjà faire un point, c'est-à-dire un bilan de compétences. One of the facilitators reveals that the forum dwelt principally on the classification of profiles, discovering new opportunities, and creating professional networks. Le marché de l'emploi et en, en, en troisième point, euh, pouvoir créer un réseau professionnel. Participants have also reflected on ways to boost entrepreneurship and how employers can get the right candidates to suit their professional needs. On the issue of professional mobility, they were made to understand that it comes with preparation. Toute mobilité professionnelle se prépare. Donc on ne se lève pas du jour au lendemain pour dire que je change d'entreprise. Il faut se donner un Experts un say bon temps, timing bon and timing means are important to make the leap. Mieux structurer la suite par rapport à sa carrière professionnelle. Managers have also been edified on how to make their companies more productive. Culture in this newscast, a group of poets, uh, musicians and instrumentalists from abroad are organizing a festival this weekend at the French Cultural Institute here in Douala. The same event is expected in Yaoundé the week after. What is this festival all about? Philemon Ballet, once again. Poète tambour, j'abrite et j'habite la résonance du monde ma. Plus me transporte l'écho humain, les mots de l'âme, les mots de l'homme, l'écume des jours, l'éclat des nuits, derrière l'écran, accro, accran, j'écris avec le cœur écrin d'amour toujours. A foretaste of a musical and arts festival that regroups singers, producers, instrumentalists, poets, comedians and dancers from Cameroon, Congo and France. A press conference earlier today, December 4th, brought the organizers face to face with pressmen in Douala at the French Cultural Center. I am here for a poetic and musical trip with friends, uh, Gassanji from Congo, Caroline Benz from France, and we, have to, we are here for sharing our music and our poetry, just that, music and poetry, and uh, we'll give uh, uh, training, yeah, training, and, uh, and uh, uh, our opera slam, Baroque, the, the terre de mer, d'amour et de feu, which is about life, love, and hope. The festival itself is slated for the 9th and 10th of December in Douala, but organizers talk of a master class concept, which is a platform to share ideas with local musicians and poets as well as dancers. All of these will be in the build up to the final performance this weekend. Um, uh, one week here and one week in Yaoundé. We live here uh, in Douala, yes, one week and one week in Yaoundé. The organizers say the festival has no specific clientele, but it will be open to everyone who can afford a ticket and to everyone who can appreciate good music and entertainment. And that brings us to the end of this edition of the 1 p.m. English newscast on STV. Information continues at exactly 7 p.m. with Orian Duncan for the news in the French language and 8 p.m. join Veronica Aji for the news in the English language. Good afternoon, thanks for watching and stay in the company of programs on STV. STV, votre télé.